Hello, telemarketer. Jack, television speaking. Yeah, I'm trying to make this this video over a video game. Oh, my stars! Sure, what game is it? Yeah, it's over Ring Fit. <sighs> Hello? <sighs> One sec, I'm gonna go to my desk. Hello everyone, Paper22 here, and welcome back to another video. Jack Television, everybody! Thank you. Thank you. Ring Fit Adventure. Ring Fit Adventure! Ring Fit Adventure. <laughs> Ring Fit Adventure. Ring Fit Adventure. Ring Fit Adventure shocked a lot of people when it was announced on September 12th, 2019. It was this weird video showing two people playing with what appears to be some sort of fitness ring. The game was not just another Wii Fit clone. This was something no one would have ever seen coming. On October 18th, Ring Fit Adventure was officially released to the public. Alright, let's start the adventure. The game starts and you're introduced to... Well, you. A very generic human with a face and a shirt. You, as your human self, go and investigate a mysterious ring object making noise. Whoops! Turns out it's a portal and you've released the bad guy. I hate when this happens. You release Drago, the main antagonist of the game. Oh hey, it's Bimper! Come on, dude. We already went over how fat and out of shape I am. Hey, it could be worse. You could have to exercise. You buy the game, and what's this thing? This is the Ring Fit. Hey, Editing Spencer here. Uh, it's actually called the Ring Con. Uh, I'm just now really realizing this, and I'm gonna go back to my studies. You use this glorified circle to navigate and play the game. It is actually a really cool technical object. The main gimmick of the ring is how bendable it is. You can squeeze it, stretch it, but you mainly use the ring to navigate menus and aim while inside the adventure mode. But I bet you're thinking, well, how does it track your legs? Oh, th this thing right here. Once you have both Joy-Cons ready to go, it's time to save the world. Oh, oh by the way, did, did I mention that the ring is alive? The ring is actually kind of similar to Navi from the Legend of Zelda games. It tells you where to go and tells you what to do. He always gives you new abilities after Dragagux fights. Drox's fights. Drag Dragux fights. That's that's a hard word to say. Alright, the first stage. The controls are fairly self-explanatory. You run by running, you jump by pointing the ring down and squeezing, you suck up coins and other collectibles by pointing and stretching the ring, and to break crates, you squeeze and a bust of air comes poofing out. You've got to give the creators credit. This is a workout. They nailed the exercise aspect of this game, and that's not even half of the gameplay. Hey y'all, RPG here. When you run into an enemy, you don't jump on its head or kill it. The game shifts into a full-fledged turn-based RPG. Exercise is in my top five least favorite things just under Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival, but this is cool. To perform attacks, you do different workouts. To beat the enemies. There are four types of workouts. Leg, arm, chest, and yoga workouts. Some of these require sitting down and performing endurance tasks, as others are just doing a bunch of the same movement over and over again until it says you did it right. Good job. You squeezed the thing 20 times. I'm so proud of you. And can we go over how creative some of these enemies are? These enemies are usually 
some animal from the real world mixed with an exercise equipment. That's pretty freaking cool. Like, look, Dragix is literally pumping some dumbbells that are made out of crabs. That is pretty darn creative. I do say so myself. If you know me, you know one of my favorite things about video games is the level design. World 1 is nice, relaxing, plain, which gives me a lot of Crash Bandicoot vibes. You know, now that I think about it, this game is actually basically Crash Bandicoot. Just exercising. The whole hallway design, it's its actually pretty funny how, create, how, how similar it is. Also, in many of these worlds, there are factory levels which contain conveyor belts and different factory-esque designs. And the last level, aka the big fight, is set up at night and usually is the hardest stage in every world. The level design isn't bad at any means, but they really could have spent more time on some of the level ideas because there's just not enough. One of my favorite parts of the adventure mode is the shop. Just like the Pokemon centers, you can buy potions that refill your health during battle, or clothes that do nothing but just make you look a lot cooler, which is always a plus in my book. I love this feature. It makes this game feel so much more than just a fitness game. It introduces strategy in a game about exercise. I'm not gonna lie to you, I had to use a potion or two to get through the battles. Outside the main game, you could still work out with the Ring Fit, do workout high score games, and my personal favorite, mini games. There are some pretty hard challenges. I still have nightmares about having to play that treadmill game. But overall, I think Ring Fit Adventure is a good game and deserves a sequel. There, I said it. Thank you all for watching. My arm is out of work because holy crap, that was a lot of work. Big thanks to Jack Television for helping me out with this video. If you want to go check him out, go click the link in the description or in this area, as well as my channel. I upload randomly, like this video. This I enjoyed making this video, so make sure to go watch it, my, some of my other videos. Hey, thank you so much for having me. If you did enjoy the video, make sure you slap that like button down below. Make sure you break your computer. It better be broken by the end of this video. Got it? And make sure you don't forget to subscribe to become a part of the Bimp Nation. I'll catch you guys all later. See ya. Dude, that's my thing. Well, I guess I'll see you all on the flippity flop.